In section 9.4, we will be focusing on the Pythagorean Theorem, or as your book likes to call it, Geometry's Most Elegant Theorem. I'm sure you've worked with the Pythagorean Theorem in some of your previous math classes, but in this class, we are going to apply the theorem to very complex geometry problems. And we are also going to prove the theorem. We are going to prove that the square of the measure of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the measures of the legs. Let's start off here by labeling our triangle ABC. And since this is a right triangle, I'm going to put a right angle at angle C. The side across from angle A, I'm going to call it A. The side across from angle B, I'm going to call it B. And the side across from angle C, I'm going to call it C. Then I am going to draw segment CD that is perpendicular to segment AB because from a point outside of a line, only one perpendicular can be drawn to the line. We now should recognize that CD is an altitude, and it is going to break up that hypotenuse into two segments. I'm going to call segment ADX, which then means that segment BD is C minus X, since the whole hypotenuse has a length of C. We should now be thinking back to what we talked about yesterday with the altitude on hypotenuse theorems. I'm going to go ahead and label the components of the triangle here using a red marker. So we have our hypotenuse, our leg one, our hypotenuse segment one, our leg two, and our hypotenuse segment two. From there, we should recognize that the leg of the given right triangle is going to be the mean proportional between the hypotenuse of the given right triangle and the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to that leg. So that comes from our similar triangles. Let's go ahead and fill it in. So the hypotenuse is C, leg one we called A, leg one is A, and HP1, that hypotenuse segment, is C minus X. Let's solve the proportion by cross multiplying and don't forget to distribute the C. So we're left with a squared is equal to c squared minus cx. Now let's use the altitude on hypotenuse theorems again. Except now let's work with leg 2 and hypotenuse segment 2. So similarly to the first one, we can set up a proportion. And we can say that the leg is the mean proportional between the hypotenuse of the given right triangle and the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to that leg. Let's fill in the given information based off of our triangle. And let's cross multiply. So we know that b squared must equal c times x. Taking the two equations that we came up with, let's go ahead and write them off to the side here. We know that a squared is equal to c squared minus cx, and we know that b squared is equal to cx. Well, what we can do at this point is we can substitute b squared in for cx in the first equation, since b squared is equal to cx. So let's go ahead and do that, which leaves us with a squared is equal to c squared minus b squared. Using addition, we can add b squared to both sides of the equation, and we're left with a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is our Pythagorean theorem. So we know that the leg squared plus leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. The Pythagorean theorem was known to the ancient Egyptians and Greeks. The first proof is attributed to Pythagoras, a Greek mathematician who lived about 500 BC. There are now more than 300 proofs of the theorem. We just went about it in one way. Now, we can also use the Pythagorean theorem to help us work backwards to determine what different types of triangles we're working with, as we'll see in a little bit. We can use the Pythagorean theorem to see if a triangle is acute, right, or obtuse. But in general, we use the Pythagorean theorem if we have a right triangle and we know two sides of the right triangle and we're looking for the length of the third side. As I just mentioned, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to help us classify triangles. So if we do a squared plus b squared and that's greater than c squared, our triangle is acute. 
If we do a squared plus b squared, and that's equal to c squared, the triangle is right. And if we do a squared plus b squared and figure out that that's less than c squared, then we can say that the triangle is obtuse. Now, since all of these triangles are not necessarily right triangles, c is always going to represent the length of the longest side or largest side. We can't say that c is the hypotenuse because it would only be the hypotenuse if the triangle is right. So anytime you're testing this out to classify the triangle and to determine if it's acute, right, or obtuse, make sure that your C is always your longest or largest side of the triangle. We'll pick back up with the second part of the notes in just a moment.